Louise uh, has just joined me for a couple of minutes uh, to do a question and answer on anxiety. Um, we're keen just to help people think through some of the stresses that are connected with coronavirus, pandemic, lockdown, the ways that's impacting on us. So we thought about conflict a couple of weeks ago. And we're going to talk about anxiety this morning for just a few moments. And then uh, we'll come back to it again next week because there's quite a few questions that have come up not got time to answer them all today. Uh, Louise, first question then is, how do you think that the lockdown has increased our anxiety or affected us in terms of anxiety? Uh, well, it's a great question. This has got a host of different answers depending on who you are and what your experience of lockdown has been. For many people, the economic uncertainty has been a source of anxiety. For others, feelings of isolation, living with difficult relationships and close proximity can cause anxiety. There's also fear for loved ones and extended family that we haven't been able to see. Uh, then you take it out from out with our own homes. You've got the graphic de depictions of overwhelming suffering, the endless cycling, cycle of harrowing bad news, and it doesn't seem to be getting that much better. And then, of course, there's the fear of the virus itself and actually getting it. So these things have all brought a change to the norm for all of us. So none of us has been left untouched. Uh, the things that have given us, uh, give us a sense of security are for the most part on shaky ground. So for most of us, no matter how peaceful our lives are, we're all living under some kind of cloud of anxiety. And it, it may just come out as a lack of focus. Uh, but these things can come and go. So first of all, if you are anxious, you're not alone. And if you aren't, then maybe now is a good time to take a moment to enter into someone else's very real experience. Good. So lots of different ways in which we've been made anxious by what's going on. Um, what does the Bible have to say about anxiety then? Because I think it's really important for us to, to always ask, you know, what does God have to say specific to this issue so well the passage we read today Matthew 6 and then Paul and Philippians 4 speak to it directly so these verses tell us two two things anxiety is something that we will feel uh, it is part of our humanness in a broken world it also tells us that the answer lies outside of ourselves so these two passages give us quite practical examples of what to do with our anxiety uh, the, the, the Matthew 6 passage thinks about creation and nature so you know, actually going for a walk can help us. It allows your mind to get some perspective, to allow your body to feel the sun, to be stretched. Living into the promises of God in that moment. Be assured, again, Matthew 6, that God gives us what we need today for that day. Often our anxiety can have a very physical component and we do need to combat it with that in mind. But most of all, we need to look to God. So what does that mean? You know, how do we actually look to God? What does that what does that look like? Well, again, the Philippians passage says pray. It may sound very simple, but pray, you know, and it was just so lovely to hear Tessa Pitt talking about that. Uh, just that habit of praying. Psalm 68, 8 says, pour your heart out to him for God is our refuge. He's a safe place for us to go with everything that is on our hearts. And I think God there means absolutely everything. Our anxiety is often saying, I am not in control. Okay, go. Keep going. I don't know how to cope or what the future has in store. It says, I can't do this and I feel overwhelmed. God says, come to me with your burdens and I will give you rest. God says, things may be falling apart, but I am still sovereign and my purposes are never changing. So you're in good company. The Psalms are chock-a-block with anxiety and depression. As people in lockdown, we now realize that so much is out with our control. More than ever before, we're discovering this. The truth, of course, is we were never really in control. We need to take all these fears and anxieties and lay them out before the Lord. Take a verse like Isaiah 12 2. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. So take this verse, maybe memorize it, speak it out loud. Words do make a difference. They remind us of who God is. Your mind may not feel like it, but eventually you will believe these words in your heart and they will make a difference to your life. Thanks, Louise. So that's a kind of starting point. There's quite a few more questions uh, to look at, but it's a big subject. We're going to leave some of them till next week.
going to think next week about how Jesus models for us ways to care well for those who suffer with anxiety and depression. We're going to think next week about how to get help if we are suffering and how we help others. So uh, that'll be next week. But thanks, Louise. And uh, do care well for each other in this time. Be kind. Tell each other good news. Connect with people and care well. So thanks for joining Cornerstone this week and have a fine week.